nerds, 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 nerds. Welcome back to the boat show. What's going on, everybody? Today we welcome the talented Curtis Armstrong to the show. Curtis is a Michigan native best known for his role as the iconic booger in the Revenge of the Nerds franchise, as well as his roles in Risky Business, Supernatural, Moonlighting, and American Dad. Thanks for joining us, Curtis. How are things going? Well, Brad, things are going very well. It's a pleasure to be here and talking to you. I'm in the middle of making some fish soup. So you're going to have to uh, bear with me while I'm waiting for this to come to a boil. But it's a pleasure to be here and fire away. You were born and raised in the Detroit area just like me. In your opinion, what is your favorite part of the city and how often do you visit? The last time I was there for a long stretch, I was doing a movie there called Sparkle. And I was living downtown while we were filming it. And it was one of my favorite times. By the, I would say by 1968, I was in Berkeley, Michigan. That's where my parents lived. Um, but it had been a long time since I'd spent a lot of time downtown. And I'd say downtown is one of my favorite places. I just love the feel of it. I love the history of it. Uh, the water, the, the uh, Detroit River, the... Uh, there's so much about Detroit that I love. Uh, but I also like some of the things that are, you know, North Woodward. I like Cranbrook Gardens and Meadowbrook Theater, where I got the start of my career. Um, there are a ton of things that I love about it, and a lot of memories, because I really did grow up there. Yeah, we love the city as well. Just in the past few years, we have seen a big change and a lot of new growth. It's tremendous. It's been 35 years since the release of Revenge of the Nerds. Did you think at the time of shooting it would become as big as it did, and when did you realize it was going to be a classic? <laughs> well, we never realized it was going to be a classic. We thought that it was actually um, sort of a terrible movie that no one would ever see. We really weren't thinking that it was going to have a future at all. All of us on the movie, the director, the actors, everybody thought it was just terrible. And nobody was more surprised than we were when it became famous. It, it took a while because we're talking about 1984 uh, when it came out, and that was sort of the beginning of a bunch of things that led to its popularity. There was the uh, the convention, the uh, uh, pop conventions, Comic Cons were starting then. Uh, the internet was really gaining ground, uh, and cable television and VHS tapes were all happening. So they were all looking for content, and something like Revenge of the Nerds, with just this sort of trashy comedy. Um, took up time uh, that they needed for entertainment. So that was, that was how it became famous. If it hadn't been for that, no one re would remember Revenge of the Nerds now. So over the, you know, the, the subsequent 20 years or so, it just garnered this huge following of nerds who love it. And um, we're delighted. I mean, the cast and I still get together once a year or so. Um, it's really been fun. If Risky Business was filmed today, who do you think would play the roles of Joel and Miles? <laughs> I, I, I would love to answer the question. I have no idea. I don't know who the young actors would be for those parts. The funny thing is that I was 29 when I made that movie. So I was playing a high school student. Tom Cruise was, I think, turned 19 when we were on the show. So we were, I was certainly way too old to be playing that part, but I looked young. Um, today, the difference would be they would hire 
guys who were actually in high school or high school age to do uh, to do a job like that. Um, but who they would be, no idea. I think I will say Zac Efron and Curtis Armstrong, because I think you could still pull it off. You play Snot on American Dad. How much do you enjoy voice acting, and what is the most difficult part? It's a different. It's a different, uh, really, animal because it's uh, with American Dad with Snot. Uh, I am called up periodically to come in and record my part, uh, and I do it alone in a booth with the director on the other side of the glass giving me direction. Most of the time, I don't even do the read-through with the rest of the cast. The only time I do that is when Snot has a big part on the episode. So mostly, I'm just sitting in a booth reading the lines and then adjusting when the director tells me to. Um, that's not as much fun as, you know, acting in on camera or on stage where you get to work with people and fire off each other and get to know the other people. Um, it's just a different, different kettle of fish. And I would say I prefer on camera. You worked on Supernatural as Metatron from season 8 to 11. I've heard it's a great set to be on. Is that true? It was a great set to be on. I'm sure it still is. I miss doing it. It was a great part. And uh, uh, working with all of those people, uh, the actors, the crew, the directors, the writers, everybody on that show was really top notch. And uh, those years of going up to Vancouver and shooting that character was a great, great character beautifully constructed character, great arc for the character going from, you know, inexcusably horrible to redeemed and then dead. Uh, it, was, it was really one of the high points of my acting career. You have to tell us about your recent book and what types of stories should we expect? Well, my book, which is, uh, is, uh, came out in, in uh, 2017 uh, called Revenge of the Nerd, The Singular Adventures of the Man Who Would Be Booger, um, is a combination of things. It's a, it's a memoir. It goes back to uh, my days in Detroit. There's a lot of early stories about growing up in Detroit and getting started at Meadowbrook and at Willoway Apprentice Theater, which used to be out uh, in Birmingham, in uh, Bloomfield Hills, rather, uh, but is long gone now. Um, so there are those stories, uh, and then there's also um, stories about the making of Risky Business, Revenge of the Nerds, and Better Off Dead, and uh, Supernatural. There's a whole chapter on Supernatural. So it's a combination of a lot of things, mainly just a memoir like any other. There's a rumor going around about Disney bringing back Revenge of the Nerds for another installment. Any truth to that, and would you be on board? No. It's as far as I've talked to to Robert Carradine and all the other uh, people involved with the original films. No one has heard anything about this. We don't know what made them make an announcement when no one has been approached about it. Um, unless they're planning on doing a new version of Revenge of the Nerds with other actors and other writers, which is possible. They've tried that before. It didn't work. But um, it's, we, we really don't know anything about it. But I mean, I think that we all feel that that, that iteration of Nerds is done. I mean, we're all old enough now that it wouldn't make sense to try to sort of recapture that uh, lightning in a bottle. Thanks, Curtis. Before we go, do you have any advice for me on becoming a star? Oh, Brad? You want to know something? Every now and then, say what the heck. 
What the heck gives you freedom? Freedom brings opportunity, and opportunity makes your future. So Brad, thank you for having me on. You are a cool little dude, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks again to Curtis Armstrong. You are an absolute icon, and we appreciate you taking the time to be on my show. We hope to see you next time you are in town. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Bye.